Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we are coming with this new tutorial on how to use the new navigation system of Unity to create the behavior of the zombie. As you can see he's in the idle state but we're gonna use the AI system or the agent to move him from one waypoint to another. We can specify these waypoints in the level. We are going to use these uh, spheres and move it randomly from one waypoint to another. And I want to apologize to you guys because I haven't uploaded a video for a while. From now on, I will continue creating these videos. We are going to upload one video each Sunday. So make sure to hit the subscribe button, that helps me a lot. And without any further ado, let's dive right in. So this is what we left off from the last video. We have added the FPS controller and the zombie. We've just added the idle state. And if you haven't watched my recent episodes, make sure to watch it. And now we are in episode number 4. So let's get back to the project. First of all, we want to add the walking uh, state by dragging the walking animation that we have downloaded from mixamo.com. It is called zombie walk. We need to move it to the animator. It is created automatically when we have dragged the idle animation to the zombie. And we need to make some transitions. So we are going to add a transition from idle to walk by right click, make transition and click the walking animation. So I'm going to rename it to patrol state or let's leave it like that, zombie walk. It's going to be the patrol state. Then we're going to make another transition from walk to idle. Now to control it, we are going to add a parameter. To add a new parameter, we go under the parameters tab, hit the plus button. We have few options like float, an integer, and a boolean. Normally we use the float to change the speed of the player or the agent. Today I'm going to use a boolean. I'm going to call it is idle. So when we change this to true, the zombie is going to be in the idle state. And when we set it to false, he's going to switch from idle to walk. And to do that, we have to select the transition from idle to walk and set the condition using the plus icon. So when is idle is false, we're going to go to the walking or the patrol state. And when it's true, we're going to get back. Also, I want to remove has exit time so that we can instantly go from idle to walk once we change the parameter. Same thing right here. And if you want to change the transition duration, you could set it from here and adjust it. This is going to smooth the transition between these states. Now we want to control this parameter from the code. Basically, we have a system that is called finite state machine, which allows you to attach a specific code to the idle state or the walk state. And this code is going to be running when the zombie is idle. To do so, we click on the state and we're going to go under the inspector and add a behavior, which is a new C sharp script. It's recommended to name it like this. We put idle because we are in the idle state. Then we add state but it doesn't matter. Then we hit enter to create it and hit enter again. And this script is created by default under the asset. I want to move it under the zombie folder. Then we can open it up. And in here we have some code. Basically we're gonna use three main functions. The first one is onStateEnter. We have onStateUpdate and onStateExit. I'm gonna uncomment these. So the onStateEnter is going to be called each time we enter the idle state. Normally we use it to initialize some variables. Next we have the on state update. So it's like the update, it is called each frame, but it's going to be working only when we are in the idle state. So this is called the finite state machine. I think it's really powerful to create the AI behavior of the enemies inside Unity. And finally we have on state exit, which is called once we exit the state. For example, we're going to wait for 5 seconds under the idle state. Then we're going to switch to the patrol state. So the condition here is going to be the timer. To do that, I will add a variable on top, which is going to be our timer using float timer. And here we have to set it to 0 by default. Of course, we're going to use the on state enter by writing timer equals 0 by default. And under the on state update, we're going to increase it to calculate the time so that we can check if we have passed 5 seconds and to do that we use timer plus equals the time.delta time I think Microsoft Visual Studio is really powerful 
So it knows that I'm using this line of code to increase the timer. To put this code, I'm going to use tab and tab again. Next, we're going to add an if statement so that we can check if the timer is greater than 5 sec. You could put whatever you want right here. In such case, we're going to switch to the patrol state. And to do that, we need to access the animator component and change the parameter is idle to false. Luckily, we can access the animator from the function using animator dot set boolean and in here we're gonna put the boolean that we have created which is called is idle and we're gonna set it to false and that's it for now for the idle state and once we go from idle to walk we're gonna add some logic to it for now I am gonna wait for 10 seconds or 15 seconds and switch back to idle to do that we select the state add behavior but here I'm gonna call it patrol state the same thing, I'm going to put it under the zombie folder and open it up. The same thing, let's uncomment these. We almost have the same logic. So I'm going to copy the same code. We're going to wait for 15 seconds. After that, we're going to switch to idle by changing the boolean is idle to true. And let's try to test it out. By default, he's walking because the boolean is idle. It's set to false by default. I'm going to use uh, true for now. As you can see, he's idle for 5 seconds. Then he's going to switch to walking for 15 sec. But he's not actually moving. We are just playing the animation. To move it, we are going to use the new navigation mesh system, which allows us to move this character from any point to another. You have to install the package by going to Window, Package Manager, and under Unity Registry, make sure to search for AI. The current version that I'm using is 2.0.8. Make sure to install it and you can close this window. To start using the AI system, first we have to specify the area that the zombie can walk on. To do it, we have to create an object from the hierarchy by right clicking and go under AI. We have three main components. We're going to use the first one, nav mesh surface, to set the surface. We're going to leave the name as it is and I want to put it on top. So if you click on this object, you will see that we have this component nav mesh surface that contains some parameters like the agent type. It's a human or a humanoid, but we're going to change or you could change these parameters later on. Using the new AI system, all of the objects by default are set to walkable area. Here we have the object uh, collision. You see that we have the layers, everything. I think I'm going to remove the player from this list. And to actually see the walkable area, we have to click on this button, bake. And if it doesn't appear, you need to activate this option. And there you go. We have this blue area, which means that the zombie can walk on this area. And he can't move from this side because he's a little bit long, I guess. For now, I'm going to stick with the default parameters and let's move on to the next part which is adding the agent to our zombie and move it using this component. So we have to select it from the hierarchy and we're going to add this component nav mesh agent. Here we have the agent type. We are selecting a humanoid because you could add other agents. If there is a bigger enemy, you could create one for it. Also, we have few parameters like the speed the angular speed and the acceleration. So make sure to tweak these and check if it's working perfectly with the zombie. For me, I think uh, he's a little bit slow. So I'm going to change the speed to 1. The same thing for the angular speed. I'm going to use 60. And the acceleration, let's use 3. I'm going to show you how to change the parameters of the humanoid agent. So we can select the nav mesh surface and under humanoid, we can open the agent settings. And here it is. This is called the humanoid. You can change the radius. For example, I want to increase the bit, like uh, 0.35. We have the height and the step height. Now let's close this window and make sure to hit bake every time you change the parameters so that you can see the walkable area. Now we're going to access the agent component and we simply have to use the method set destination to set a specific destination. But first, I want to create the waypoints, which we're going to reference from the code. I'm going to right click and let's create an empty game object and call it waypoints. 
and let's put some spheres you could use any object that you want we're going to use the transform component or more specifically the position so I'll create a sphere so that we can see it in the scene for now using 3d object and sphere we have our first waypoint I'm gonna put it in the level then we can duplicate it using right click and duplicate let's move another one inside this room and let's add a third position like here and finally I want to add the last one Control D now we're gonna go under the patrol state we want this logic under patrol on top I'm gonna add a reference to the agent that we're gonna use the type is nav mesh agent and you see that Visual Studio has imported the package automatically unity engine.ai we're gonna call it agent and we're gonna initialize it under the on state enter I'm really impressed with the IDE because it's suggesting the right line of code that I want to get the component we use animator dot get component nav mesh agent so I will simply hit tab now we want a reference to these points for that I will create an array or a list by using the list type it's gonna be a list of transform we're gonna call it waypoints equals new list of transform I don't know why we have this error we can show the potential fixes yeah we need this package and under the on state enter we're gonna assign all of the waypoints using a for each loop but to do that we need uh, to get a reference to the waypoints empty game object and the way we do that in unity is by using a tag we're gonna attach a tag to this object by going under tag and you can create one using add tag I've already created this one that is called waypoints you can hit the plus button and create it then we can set it to this waypoints object by choosing waypoints now under the code we can get it transform game object I'm gonna call it uh, waypoints container is equal to game object and we have this function find object with tag that takes in the tag name let me double check it is called waypoints and we need to transform using dot transform now we're gonna assign the objects that are inside the waypoints container to this waypoints list by using for each and luckily we have the right code so for each transform t inside the waypoints so it's inside the waypoints container not waypoints so for each transform t inside the game object waypoints we're gonna use waypoints which is the list dot add t which adds all of the game objects that are under waypoints and make sure to close the curly braces next we are going to set the destination to one random position by using the command agent dot set destination and it takes in the position of the waypoint for that I'm going to use the waypoints uh, container uh, sorry the waypoints uh, list and to select an item we use square brackets and here we're going to use a random one by writing random dot range and we're going to specify a random value between 0 and the length of the waypoints list which is going to pick up one of the spheres of course we have to use the position by adding dot position now each time the enemy goes from idle to patrol he's going to go to one of the random waypoints but we need to move it from one waypoint to another each time he reaches one of the waypoints we need to move it to another one and we do that under the on state update but how we can check if the enemy has reached the position and we're going to check if the remaining distance of the agent is less or equal to the stopping distance by adding agent dot stopping distance which means the enemy reaches the position or the waypoint in such case we're going to move it to another one by using the same line of code so I'm going to copy it and paste it right here let's save the code and get back into unity 
so you don't have to assign anything from the inspector as you can see he's idle now he's walking to one of the waypoints i think it's the, that one and there you go he switches back to the idle state and this is the problem that i am talking about he keeps moving to the waypoint to solve that under the patrol state we need to make sure to stop it whenever we exit this state by using the agent component so under the on state exit i'm gonna add agent and to stop it we can use this stop method but i think it's deprecated so we have another option we can use set destination and we're gonna set it to his current position and that's how we can stop it we're gonna enter animator dot transform dot position so he's gonna move to his current position which means stopping the enemy and let's save it again you see by default the enemy is idle so i'm inside the scene view so that we can see his behavior now he's moving from one way point to another and he gets back to the idle state and so on in our next episodes we are going to add the other states like uh, chasing attacking and so on so i think that's pretty much it guys for this episode if you have a question or comment make sure to put it under the comment section down below and as usual i will see you in the next one